Hi and welcome to this video lecture. We're going to continue our discussion on machine learning using Python and a toolbox called sklearn or scikit-learn. We're going to uh, proceed to talking about fitting a linear multivariate model. So I do have a an example data set that I'll be using and you can find that in the video description here. You can just download it at that link. Uh, specifically what we're going to do is we're going to fit a linear model with some data and if you remember our objective function, uh, uh, as we defined in our previous lecture, is to minimize the sum squared error between our model estimate and the actual data. And we're going to use a model that looks like this, where our model estimate is just a linear function of all of our input variables or features. So just uh, this is just a reminder of what all these different terms mean. The example data set you can find uh, at the link. It just looks something like this. Uh, so we're, for whatever our system is, if you remember I gave the example of trying to predict the car's velocity based on a different number of inputs like wind speed outside or how much the car weighs or if you're going up a hill or down a hill. Um, this is just a generic example but these would be our inputs. So x1, x2, and x3 and this would be our measured output. So this is the actual data that tells us uh, what our output is. So ultimately we want to have a model that, that replicates us and gets us as close to predicting y if we know all of the different inputs. So we're going to start with a purely linear model. I am going to do this using a Jupyter notebook. So that notebook is here and we're just going to walk through this step by step. I won't do um, much of the coding here but I'll talk through each step. So first we want to import pandas, which is a, another Python toolbox that's just used to handle data in data frames. Uh, we're going to be using this, remember we talked about sklearn, we're going to be using this sklearn toolbox. The first model that we're going to use is just a linear model using this ordinary least squares regression method. And what makes it ordinary least squares is that we're just trying to minimize the sum of squared error. Um, so. The reason it's called least squares is because our objective function is to uh, minimize the sum of squared errors. So you want to get the least sum of squared error that you that you can get. All right, back to our Jupyter notebook here. So we're doing importing from the sklearn toolbox. We're importing this tool called linear regression. We're also going to import uh, this tool called test train split. So at the end of the day, we want to use we want to have a predictive model. So you could select these combination of features and use these, run them through your model so that you can predict an outcome. So in typically in machine learning, you don't want to use all of your data for fitting or training your model. Rather, you want to use a portion of your data to train the model and then another portion of the data to test it out and make sure that it does accurately predict. If you use all of your data for training, you might find that it, um, it may not extrapolate or it may not fit the, the, the testing data well, in which case you might want to uh, find a different model. So it's good to hold out some of your model for just for testing it and evaluating the performance of your model. All right, uh, we're also just going to import some basic metrics like mean absolute error and then R squared. So the R squared is a, is a score, hopefully you're familiar with it from statistics. R squared um, can also be like the can also be framed as the percentage of variance that you're able to explain. So uh, I'll I'll get to that later. And then finally, just some plotting tools. All right. So we are first going to import this data. So after we after we load all of our models, we're going to import our data using this pandas uh, read CSV. So this will just bring in that data file that again is available to you in the link in the video description. So I'm going to run this and at first I just want to look at this data. I showed you a glimpse of it in spreadsheet form which was not very useful I'm sure. Um, so we're going to look at this data. We want to look specifically at how um, how x these different x inputs relate to y. So here we're just plotting x1 on the x-axis versus y. So here's how x1 versus y looks. And so you can see this is pretty noisy. There's a lot of variance in our data. We want to see if we can come up with a model that allows us to explain a lot of this variance. And that would be manifested by having a high r-squared value. So an r-squared of 1 means that your model perfectly explains all the variance in the data. 
an R squared of 0 0.5 means that your model only explains 50% of the variance in the data. So there is a lot of variance in this data uh, when we're looking at our X1 input versus Y. And it, there is a little bit of a trend here. So maybe there's a linear model here that would capture some of this, but still may not be the most accurate model just based on how much variance there is here. All right, let's look at how Y varies with our other input, X2. So now you can see a clear nonlinear relationship here where you can see that Y varies maybe quadratically with respect to X2, still a lot of variance in that data. This is uh, a lesson on multivariate regression. So we're hoping that by, by looking at this with multiple variables, meaning X1, X2, and X3, that that captures more of an explanation of the variance just by looking at a single variable it's pretty clear that if we, if you fit just a like a polynomial through here, yeah, it would, it would go through this data, but there would still be a lot of uncertainty or a lot of variance that you're unable to explain. So we're hoping that by including multiple features or multiple variables as inputs that our model will be accurate and be able to explain much more of the variance. All right, and let's look at Y versus X3. So this one is the worst of all of them. It's not even really clear that there is any kind of a trend here between Y and X3, but that is something that we can find out. All right, so moving on, um, I'm just, what we want to do here is we want to pull our specific variables to, as inputs. So we created this pandas data frame called, called ML underscore data, which is just the same data that is in the CSV file with the same name. Um, and we just want to tell this, tell our model which of these variables do we want to be the inputs to our model? And so we want those to be X1, X2, and X3, and we're gonna join them into a matrix that we will just call X. And that's all this, this is doing here. So now we're defining a matrix of inputs uh, or called X. We're doing the same thing here. Now we're just separating out the Y from our CSV file into a dedicated, this is, uh, no longer just a, a matrix, it's just a single vector, a single column vector. All right, so we've got now our inputs defined and our measured output defined, or our target. So Y would be like our, our target value. Our next step is going to be this step. We want to, we're just using that test, train test split. So this is the command we're using. We're saying take all this data and divide it up into 20% testing data and 80% training data. And so we, so this function allows us to define, okay, which percentage of our inputs are for training and which are for testing. And it does the same thing with our measured output or our target, which are for training and which are for testing. Okay, so then this command is using now that linear regression uh, command from the sklearn toolbox. And this is solving that optimization problem. It's finding the optimal set of parameters. That's Those are the W values. It's, it's running those uh, with our inputs into the model and it's calculating the sum of squared error and then running an optimization algorithm to minimize the sum of squared error by changing all of those parameter values or the W values. And I am need to actually run these cells. Um, all right, so this one, these functions, this model1.predict, so we've defined here, model1 is our regression model that's built in as an object into Jupyter Notebook at this point. So we can call on that object to make predictions. So we can say, run these predictions using our training inputs and predict our training output. And we also want to run these predictions using our testing inputs to predict our testing output. And then here I want to look at those st statistics. So specifically, I want to look at the mean absolute error for training, the mean absolute error for testing, and then I want to look at the R squared for training and the R squared for testing. So I'm going to go ahead and run these, run these predictions, look at the printout values. So for our training data, we have a mean absolute error of 31. For our testing data, it's a little worse. We have a higher mean absolute error of 33, and that's pretty typical. It's it's not always the case because there is some randomness to how you select the data, uh, but it's not atypical that your the model performs better on the training data and worse on the testing data, and that's because 
it's actually trained on the training data, but you still want your testing data performance metrics to be pretty good. If we look at the R squared value, so we're getting about 0.49 for our training data. That is not, not particularly good. That means we're only explaining about 50% of the variance using this linear model. It gets even worse for our testing data. Again, it's not atypical for performance to get worse on testing data because this is data that was not used to do the training. It's purely uh, extrapolating from your model. So we're getting a, an R squared value only of about 38% here. So this isn't a very good model just from looking at the performance metrics. Um, it's really good to be able to plot your data. So these next set of commands, I'm not going to go into detail here. Basically, the basic commands are we are plotting the data. We want to develop, this is what's called a parity plot, where we plot the actual data, the actual measured values or the targets on the x-axis, and then we plot the model predicted values on the y-axis. And typically you want to see a perfect one-to-one -one ratio. That would give you an R squared of one, meaning that your model perfectly explains all of the variance in the data. So we're going to do this separately for our training data. I'm going to label the training data with uh, red dots. And then we're going to plot our testing data. Those will have blue dots. This is just stuff to make the plot a little prettier. This command in particular, I just, I'm just going to have a black solid line that goes from, that, that spans the range of my data. And I'll explain a little bit more about this. So um, most of these other commands are just making the plot look a little bit prettier. So feel free to copy those if you would like. All right, when we look at, a, at the data, this is called a parity plot of our data. You can see, again, the actual value of y is here on the x-axis, and the model predicted version of y is on the y-axis. And this black line, this is the 45 degree line. This line, if all of our data points lined up perfectly on this line, that would mean we have a perfectly predictive model. So we kind of know that we had pretty poor R-squared values, and this sort of confirms, yeah, this isn't the greatest model. You can see, for example, the actual data shows here that, the, that our output was something like 270. But our model is predicting that it's more like 190, maybe. So that's really not great. That's a pretty high percent error. So similarly, uh, here our model predicts for this data point, our model predicts maybe 120, and it's actually about 25. So there's still a lot of spread in this data. This linear model is not doing a very good job capturing all the variance or explaining all the variance that's in our data. So we want to iterate and see if we can find better features and a better model that allow us to fit some of this data. I also down here, um, I want to look, you can actually extract data from your model. So you can look at these, what the model coefficients are. So if you want to look like, what does my model actually look like? I can just go type in model one dot coef and it has this underscore and I want to print this. This is how you would print out to see, okay, what does my model actually look like? So my model would be, uh, and I'm, oh, this, so the W value, W1 would be 9.53, so it's W1 multiplied by X1 plus W2 multiplied by X2 plus W3 multiplied by X3. Um, and I can also print out separately the intercept. So that with this particular package, you just need to do these separately. So my intercept Oh, model one dot intercept. Okay, so my intercept there is 53.3. So my actual model is y equals 53.3 plus 9.54 times x1 plus 2.56 times x2 plus 0 0.323 times x3. So I want to go back to these relationships here. So we did think that maybe there was a, a reasonably linear relationship between y and x1. And so we see that we get a, a larger coefficient there. And here I'm actually just going to plot these coefficients. So we see that we get a pretty large coefficient with respect to x1 because there is 
what looks like a pretty linear relationship between y and x1, and that is represented in our model. For x2, it, it looks like there is a, a nonlinear relationship here. And so while x2 does appear to be significant in our model, this linear uh, feature doesn't really work all that well. So this w2 times x2 um, captures some of the variance, but not a lot of it. And then x3, if you remember, this relationship between y and x3 just looks messy, a whole lot of scatter there. There doesn't seem to be a really clear relationship there, and that is reflected in the, the fact that this coefficient is fairly uh, insignificant. So uh, stay tuned. We, this, we didn't produce a great model in this video, um, so we're going to produce a better model by looking at some of the nonlinearities. We can actually introduce modified features that capture some of the nonlinearity to see if we can improve the R squared and have a model that much better explains some of the variance. So feel free to click on the next video in this series and I'll show you how to do that.